In this lesson, we're going to take a look at something that's fundamental to virtually every type of modern web application, and that's reporting. Oracle Apex gives you a lot of different ways of creating reports inside of your application. But we're going to walk through each one of those different types in these set of lessons. Let's hop back into our Movies application. As I've mentioned before, there are numerous ways of creating a new region. We can either create a brand new page or take an existing page and create a new region on that page. For this example, I'm going to create a new page. When I create a new page, I have the ability to define a default region for the page. I'm going to select Report. As you can see, we have four basic types of reports that we can put on a page. An interactive report, a classic report, a report based on a web service result, or a wizard report. We're going to start off by looking at interactive reports, which are the most powerful types of reports that you can have in Apex. So I'm going to select the interactive report icon. Since I'm creating a new page, I'm prompted for a brand new page number, a page name, a region template, and a region name. I'm going to change the page name to Movie Report, change the region name to List of Movies. I'm also going to say I want a breadcrumb for the page. Entry name defaults to my page name, and there's no parent entry for this breadcrumb entry, so I'm just going to leave the default values. I'm not going to use tabs for this particular report. Later on, we'll take a look at tabs and how powerful they are in designing your user interface elements. On this page of the wizard, I have to define a SQL query that's going to drive my report. I can manually enter a SQL statement, or I can use the Query Builder button to use a wizard to build a query that will drive this report. For this example, I'm going to use Query Builder. I'm going to select the movie table, and then I can select which columns I want to see in this report. I probably don't want to show movie ID on the report, since that's a primary key generated by a trigger inside my database. So I'm going to select Title, Category, Rating, Date Added, and Notes. I can change the way I see the information by making changes here on the bottom of the screen. I can change the headings for the report. I can add a condition to say I only want to see certain values on the report. I can change how the information is sorted on the report the sort order on the report, if I want to show a particular column, if I want to add a function to the column on my report, if I want to group by on the report, or if I just want to remove that column from the report. To test my query before I actually return it to the wizards, I can click on the Run button here, and a sample will be generated for me of what the report will look like. If I'm happy with the results, I can click Return, and the SQL statement that I've selected will be returned automatically. If everything looks OK, I can then click the Next button to move on in the wizard. I'm taken to the Confirmation screen, and if I click Create, a report will be generated for me automatically. Now that the interactive report has been generated, we can run the page by clicking on Run Page. Oracle Application Express has generated a tremendous amount of code for us, giving us a lot of flexibility in this report automatically. For your end users to gain the full benefits of working with an interactive report, you simply have to train them on all of the user interface elements that have been generated for you automatically. For example, end users can resort information on the report by clicking one of the headings. When they click the heading, a pop up box appears, which gives them the ability to filter the information that they want to see on their report. They can change the sorting by ascending or descending, they can hide the column on the report. They can say they want a control break on the report, or they can enter values in the search box to limit the information coming back on the report. As an example, if I go to rating and say I want a control break, the report is then modified to have a control break based on rating. One of the really cool features of this is that end users can then save their version of the report so that they can pull up the report at any particular time. This cuts down greatly on the amount of programming work the developers have to do. If I go to Actions, I can then save my version of the report. I'm going to call this Chris1. Now, based on my login, which in this case is admin, I'll see different versions of the report that I can pull up at any time. Just to prove this is so, I'm going to save this URL. I'm going to log out. I'm going to put the URL back in again. And since I logged out, I have to log back in. So I'm going to log in as admin. And as you can see, I have a saved report that has the control break on rating. I can also go back to primary report. 
Again, I'm going to steal this URL, and I'm going to go into my Mozilla browser. I'm going to paste that URL for the page. I'm taken to the login screen, since obviously I don't have any cookie credentials for this particular browser. And I'm going to log in as my Paul end user. As you can see, I don't have any saved reports. The saved report that I created as the admin user is not available for Paul. The Paul user can go in and create his own saved reports that won't be available to anyone else. So I've hopped back into my original browser where I'm logged in as the admin user, and I have other capabilities that are available to me. If I go under Actions, I have the ability to create filters, the number of rows per page, different formatting options that are available to me. I have flashback options, which allow me to see the information in the table in a previous point in time. We've already seen how I can save the report after I've modified it and then get access to my version of the report without doing any programming whatsoever. And I can also download information. If I click on download, you see I have different formats that are available to me to download information in this report. I can download into a CSV file. You can see that it's downloaded here. If I click on it, it automatically starts up my Microsoft Excel and populates it with all of the information from the report. I can download it as an HTML file. If I click on HTML, you can see that it opens up a local file inside of my browser with all of the information formatted for me. I even have search capabilities built into this HTML file, which is really cool. Or I can email a version of this file to someone else. There's another download option that's available to me that doesn't display by default. If I edit this page and then edit the region, which in this case is list of movies, by double clicking on it, and then I go to report attributes. If I scroll down, you can see that by default, I have CSV, HTML, and email as my download options. I can also download as a PDF. If I select the checkbox next to PDF, say apply changes, and then run this page again, under Actions, when I say Download, I now have PDF available to me. 